Jason here, Blood Church, coming to you today. God bless each and every one of you. Going to do a video to continue the Ephesians study. Hope you find it enjoyable, and if you're not saved, please get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is the gospel given to Paul for the church age. As Jesus Christ, God himself in flesh form, walked a perfect life, never sinned. According to verses 3 and 4, he died on a cross, he was buried, and he rose on the third day. So why did he die? He died. Um, on that cross in a bloody mess so you can be forgiven of your sins. One sin will send you to eternal hellfire. And it's a belief with your heart, your whole soul, and what Jesus did on that cross to wash away your past, present, future sins. Accept the free gift of the blood of Jesus Christ today. Amen. Take a look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15. We'll start there and go to 23, the end of the chapter. Verse 15 reads, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, and love unto all the saints. Verse 16, Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. So I think the first two verses are really <clears throat> straightforward, rather without need of expo explanation. Notice in verse 16, he ceases not. So he gives thanks and he makes mention of, of them always in his prayer life. And that's important to do if you're a member of a body of Christ or a church. Verse 17, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him. Now, that's an interesting set of verse. That's an interesting verse. <clears throat> that, he, that you might have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Um, you know, so, with, you know, wisdom is just understanding of knowledge to understand it revelation is, is certainly prophecy knowledge of prophecy let's keep reading verse 18 the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and verse 19 and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power verse 20 which he wrought in christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in, in the heavenly places. So let's stop there. Um, in verse 18, we have that the eyes of your understanding should be enlightened. And, um, you know, that's important. You can see here we have Paul's prayer for the saints at Ephesus. And he starts out, that, of course, in verse 17, that they're going to have wisdom and revelation. And then in verse 2, that they're going to have understanding and enlightenment. Verse 3, or excuse me, verse 18, they also, it says, know what is the hope of his calling. So what, what are you called to do, right? The, and the hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ and this is in return and given the gospel of that. And, and then the uh, verse 18, it also talks about the riches of the glory of his, of his inheritance, and we are rich with the, with the glory of his inheritance. We benefit through Jesus Christ. Verse 5, the ex, excuse me, verse 19, the exceeding greatness of his power. And so we know that power is available to all Christians. And um, knowledge is available as well through the Bible and understanding when we rightly divide the word of truth according to 2 Timothy 2.15. And so the eyes of our understanding, a, Christ, a Christian should look for wisdom and knowledge in the book of God. And we have that intimate knowledge of our Savior, not, not in, as a friend, as we read the Bible, as we develop a relationship with him. We, we understand what it means to be a Christian, and we understand his personality, the way he thinks and reacts to situations when we read the Bible, as we have the knowledge of God. Amen. And, of course, the hope of his calling, you know, is that he'll meet us in the air someday, Titus 2.13, that that rapture will be fulfilled. And, of course, the riches of inheritance, we receive the Holy Ghost. And in this time, um, you know, we will be raised from the dead, just like Christ was. His mighty power, which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Let's take a look at... And so we'll be, we know Jesus is the right hand in heavenly places. And verse 21, far above all principality, power, might, and dominion. 
and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Verse 22, and hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head of all things to the church. Verse 23, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So, you know, that's a beautiful set of verses there and the ending I like a lot. And he's put above all principalities and powers. And everything is put under his feet, which is important, you know, to know that there's nothing in the universe now or later that's going to be greater than the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the creator and we are putting our trust in him as our savior. And he's the head of, of course, not just all things, but also the church. And we are his body. And he, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the grave physically resides in the believer and will raise us either from the grave, the, the resurrection, or at, you know, just transform us at the rapture. Amen. And that is, you know, something really to look forward to. And Jesus Christ is above all. Yeah, that's a physical location, but spiritually he is the head of everything. And that's what we put our faith in. Amen. And so, you know, I love that, that, you know, God is the head of not just the church. Jesus is the head of of all and above all, and all will bow knee to him. Amen. Anyway, I hope this was a blessing. Just a short little video. God bless.